I want to start this video with something I believe should come before anything else. Firstly, this video is an opinion and my theory regarding Mesmer, his flame, and his role in the lineage. This is not meant to be anything more than pulling ideas and presenting my thoughts. I'm not here to rain on parades or influence anyone's thoughts on these matters. But before we get too deep into the rants, which hopefully won't be too convoluted or random, as I do have a tendency to uh, go off track, let's watch the trailer and we'll dig into my thoughts a little bit after this. Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. There is nothing more terrifying. In that forsaken place, blood must spill. Blood of your fellows. They are truly faithful. They were never saints. They just happened to be on the losing side of a war. Mother, wouldst thou truly lordship sanction in one so bereft of life? I presume you, too, are keen to know. Just what kind Mikkelner is doing here. Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death. In the embrace of Vesmus' flame. Come now. Touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. So obviously there's a lot to unpack from the entire trailer, but my focus in this video is going to be Mesmer, who is a big feature in this trailer. To start with the controversy, or at least my controversy, I'm not 100% believing Mesmer is a child of America, despite the confirmation in the Famitsu article and several other references that he makes within the trailer, calling her mother. But I don't believe he is a child of America, or at least not from her union with Radagon that spawned Mikola and Melania. Though I am leaning closer on this, let me be very clear about that. I'm leaning more on this, but there is a part of me that does not 100% believe that she that he is a child of uh, that union, or potentially even from any of her known marriages, both as herself and as Radagon. And again, this feels a bit odd to say considering Mesmer has Radagon's red hair, but it feels off-putting to see that a child of America's current offspring could be so bent on blasphemy and heretical practices that he goes completely unnoticed in any of the lore to date. And before I go any further, I do want to mention that while I will present, be presenting and building my theory here, I have taken notes and inspirations from a few content creators I will reference momentarily, the three creators that I have listed to analyze the trailer and provided their breakdowns are Vati Vidya, Cyrobe, and finally Smotown. 
Back to the topic at hand though, how could someone like Mesmer, a demigod so deep in heretical practices, be forgotten or even completely removed from current lore and what are possible references to him now? Well, firstly, going unnoticed in this vast world seems possible, but both as a demigod and one who carries snakes, flames, and dragon eyes, it seems unlikely that anyone wouldn't even hear whispers of him as even Moog was noticed by Gideon, though originally he was only referred to as the Lord of Blood. Some symbolism has been popping up in regards to what might be hinting at Mesmer's relations to America, or especially Mikola and Millennia, are the Impaler's Catacombs, a spirit NPC who mentions a forgotten child of America, and the Smoldering Butterfly. I want to note that some of what I'm going to mention is abusing semantics, drawing from the use of wordage or lack thereof, but I think it's important to note that Miyazaki himself confirmed that absolutely nothing new lore-wise was written for this and that the DLC is kind of just the rest of what George R. R. Martin wrote that couldn't originally fit in the game. Now this is probably a bit stretching on my end as I'm recalling this off the top of my head, but from what I remember, this isn't anything new, it's not going to add anything to pre-existing lore entries or item descriptions. But anyways, let's get into this part. In regards to the catacombs, well, I do... I did initially think that this was a bright thought. I encourage you, however, to look at the rest of the catacombs on the map. The names are not necessarily indicative of a person or something very specific but rather hinting at a puzzle, challenge, or the location of the catacomb. The Impaler's Catacombs in this instance has, well, a giant piece of floor that smashes and impales you. Who could have guessed? To me, this comparison and hinting at Mesmer theory is like saying that if you're carrying a wallet, you probably have an ID or money of some kind on you. It's very broad and for the most part kind of lacking, at least in my opinion, to resembling Mesmer or hinting at him. If you'd like another example of this that isn't quite focused on this topic, the Giant's Mountaintop Catacombs are located at, uh, well, the mountaintop of the Giants. All of the catacombs have similar naming conventions and therefore I find it incredibly difficult to actually place faith in the Impaler's Catacombs being a, you know, a real reference to, to Mesmer, but that's just my opinion. Now, as for the spirit who mentions the Forgotten Child, I've seen many people confuse the location of this ghost. He's nowhere near the Impaler's Catacombs, as some suggest. I see a lot of people saying, oh, he's very, he's close to the Impaler's Catacombs. No, he's not. He's all the way over at the Church of Pilgrimage, located at the other northern end of Weeping Peninsula, which realistically isn't that far if you just play the game, but, you know, the the trail kind of says otherwise. It's a pretty long distance based off of how long you would probably take as a normal person. And not only that, this NPC is talking about the walking mausoleum in the distance, which houses a soulless demigod. Now, as far as the soulless demigods go, I believe Smotown explains it best in his breakdown where he references Van Dynamco's article posted pre-launch of Elden Ring. We know there are other demigods that we haven't faced in-game. The Bandai Namco article from pre-launch regarding the story trailer talks about the numerous demigods who were slaughtered in the Night of the Black Knives, not just Godwin, unnamed dead demigods. Then we also know from the Mausoleum Soldier Ashes item description that the wandering mausoleums contain unknown dead demigods, again other children of Marika that we just don't know the names of. As he mentions in the clip, many demigods were the targets of the Black Knife Assassins, not just Godwin. This heavily implies, or at least potentially gives context in referencing the Solus demigods within the mausoleums, as the other demigods who were slain on the night where death was brought into view. These other demigods would likely be other members of the Golden Lineage, as even Godric, referred to as the Runt of the Litter by Aenea who sits within the Round Table Hold, is a member of the Golden Lineage despite his cowardice and lack of strength compared to his kin. This would also go to disprove the every lineage has three children theory, as the golden lineage is at least has five uh, members that we know of. Godbroy and Godric are actually both listed as being siblings to the others as they are part of the golden lineage, which would imply that they are both demigods, which 
as we know, the golden lineage is comprised of demigods. And if we go to talk to Aenea, Aenea actually tells us that all demigods are born from Merica, which makes Merica's golden lineage not just Godwin, Moog, and Morgoth, as they are part of the golden lineage, but also Godroy and Godric, which means that her golden lineage has at least five children, not three. And as I said, Moog and Morgoth, despite their omen blood, they were born from the golden lineage. So just keep that in mind. This is conjecture relating to the Solus demigods, but I have gone a little off the rails, so let's get back to the topic at hand. Finally, everyone's favorite comparison to date, the Smoldering Butterfly. Well, I don't really have a whole lot to say on this other than it's unlike its sister butterflies, the Nasata and Aeonian Butterflies. The Smoldering Butterfly has absolutely nothing in its description that hints at having a relation or being symbolic of something. The Aeonian Butterfly reads, and I, I will preface this by saying that the lines that I'm going to read for the Aeonian and the Nascent Butterflies is only the additional line posted below. It's a essentially a description. According to myth, these butterflies were once the wings of the goddess of Ra herself. This kind of hints at Millennia's second phase, where her wings are butterflies, uh, and, you know, with her congealed long hair, a transformation made possible for being the vessel for the Rottus, for the Rottus, the goddess of Rot. The nascent butterfly reads, this butterfly appears as if it's just emerged from its cocoon for its entire life. This kind of hints that the butterfly looks like Mikola, eternally youthful. And finally, the smoldering butterfly reads, an eternally burning butterfly found near wildfires and elsewhere, material for crafting items, serves as kindling for a number of items. Nowhere does it really hint at anything regarding Mesmer unless you really want to stretch the reasoning to make it so. The other two have very obvious hints to the twins, however the smoldering butterfly lacks such obvious hinting other than serves as kindling for a number of items, which personally that fits Melina more than Mesmer as we do use Melina as kindling. And as far as eternally burning, it doesn't really make sense, at least for now, as we have no way to confirm if Mesmer's flame can burn forever or not. At least for the time being, it doesn't seem like he's burning everything down, or has been burning since the moment the flame first touched the land. But again, these are semantics, I know. But at least to me, there's no context in these three commonly held theories that lead me to believe that they actually hint at Mesmer. In regards to Mesmer's flame, I believe all three creators here have valid input on this subject. Vati and Syro both have a similar statement that Mesmer's flame is likely something new and of his own creation. Syro going as far as to say that based on the appearance of the flame, it can't be anything we've seen before. Which again goes to note that this is potentially a new type of flame. And then there's Mesmer's usage of flame. According to the Spark aromatic, fire was prohibited to those who served the Erd Tree. And while this rule was forgotten as the war drew ever on, I do think Mesmer might have some links to the flame of the Fel God, if I had to guess. He's got the red hair, and snakes do appear on the giant's flame forge in the mountaintops, but I'll admit these connections are pretty shaky. We don't know exactly what kind of flame Mesmer is using just yet. Now, the last major thing to figure out is the flame that Mesmer uses. In the trailer, we are told that this is Mesmer's flame. He either created it or owns it, and it's something unlike any other flame that exists within Elden Ring. I double-checked all the particle effects, and I can confidently confirm that Mesmer's flame is not Blood Flame, and is also not Giant's Flame, based on how different the particle effects look. Mesmer's flame is clearly black and dark red. There's almost no orange or yellow found within it. During my livestream reaction, some audience members pointed out that it might be a mixture of both Black Flame and Destined Death, because apparently Black Flame could once slay the gods. But when Malekith sealed Destined Death, the true power of the Black Flame was lost. But what I think is more likely is that this flame could literally just be Mesmer's flame, as the trailer said, a completely new and unique flame that he owns or created. Smotone varies in this opinion a bit, as I do as well. He mentions the flame being used does look like the Blood Flame, or even appears similar to the Dragon Communion Seal. Let's talk about the appearance of Mesmer, as there's tons of detail here. First of all, he seems to be wielding the Blood Flame, 
and his spear, his impaling spear, very much looks like Moog's trident except with just one prong obviously. This makes us think that there is an association with the Formless Mother, a force somewhat heretical to the Golden Order and as we discuss Mesmer more you will see that this really is a pattern with him. I mentioned Bloodflame and the Formless Mother, but could there also be a connection to the Blood Star? This is interesting because I am actually working on a Blood Star video that should be out in the next week or so. The communion seal appearance is brief however, where the flame is lit in his hand and blazes a deep red. Smotown also mentions the visual appearance of Briar magic, though I am unsure if the black tendrils seeping from the flame are actually briars or not. Could make sense considering Mesmer's disposition as a demigod who embodies sin and heresy, may also wreathe himself in briars to symbolize his guilt and impurity. I watched Smotown's video quite a bit later than Syrob and Vati's, but already he's mentioned a few things that I myself was leaning on to, but wasn't too sure how to explain it or how I should stand with it. And to sidetrack a little bit, I do want to go with going to Syrob's dismissal of an already seen flame. I do feel a little bit obligated here to mention that while this is a bit more unique than standard pyromancy, Rykard's Rancor. And while this is a sorcery, spell and not a pyromancy incantation. When it is activated, we can clearly see the dark red streak through the air as the bright orange and red explosions follow moments later. Yes, the spell is not quite the same thing, but visually it shares several color similarities. And this is what Rykard's Rancor reads. The terrible power of Rykard, Lord of Blasphemy, summons searing spirits that leave a trail of delayed explosions in their wake. These spirits manifest from the rancor of heroes who met a violent end. The Lord granted them an audience, whereupon they were welcomed by the maw of the great serpent, and within the serpent's bowels, they become the Lord's kin. While Rykard's rancor is a magma sorcery and not a pyromancy incantation, I only brought this as a visual aid. My assumption regarding this spell is that while magma and not fire, the act of blasphemy and stealing oneself, or staining oneself, sorry, Standing oneself with the marks of a heretic, in Rykard's case this is feeding himself to and becoming a serpent, alters the spell into something a bit more repulsive. To continue piggybacking off of this, I do believe that Mesmer's flame is indeed something brand new. A flame born of blasphemy, communion, and corruption, though unlike Syrob's mention of the godskin's black flame, I believe Mesmer only incorporated the more common flames that are blasphemy and heretical. While yes, the black flame is a flame of heresy, in a sense, it was used to kill gods, but Mesmer has no use for a flame meant for killing gods if he himself could end up on the other end of it, and possibly be burnt by it regardless due to his state of demigodhood, if that is a word. Mesmer is a being of pure blasphemy and the defilement of natural life, though defilement might be kind of a stretch here. He has altered himself through various acts that he can no longer be considered quote unquote normal. Therefore, it would make sense that the flame he wields to burn those endowed with grace in the land of shadows would also be a concoction of blasphemy and other common heretical flames like the blood flame. I have seen some skepticism regarding his relation to the Formless Mother, even Smotown mentions this in his video, and I even have a discarded theory that references him having a metaphorical relationship to her. However, I think it's important to stick to some slightly more grounded assumptions when referencing a relationship between the two. The Formless Mother and her granting of power to those with cursed or tainted blood could potentially apply to Mesmer as well for one of two reasons. The first, he has become a being that represents heresy by incorporating dragon communion, convening with serpents, and using or creating a new dark flame. Or two, he's actually a sibling of Mikola and Millennia, both of whom likely have cursed blood to accompany the curses they are burn born with. This implies that similar to the twins, Mesmer was born with a curse. But what curse could befit the child of heresy? Well, if we are to believe that he has any kind of relationship to the Formless Mother, then perhaps it could be just that. A curse to be born without flesh, without form. Either vanishing from the god's womb, or simply being born cold, 
Mesmer was actually alive but had no form. Enlisting the help of the formless mother or teaming up with her or her somehow finding his way to her in some way, shape, or form, who not only would favor him because of his cursed blood, but also the curse that he wields himself itself, he would also he would find a way to reincarnate himself with the new flesh. And I do originally had I did originally have this as um part of my discarded theory where I mentioned that he might actually be within Mikola's flesh. Seeing as both of their corpses seem not cool, well, Mik Mesmer's not a corpse, but his body seems to be a bit lanky, like Mikola's corpse, as the arm seems to be extraordinarily long compared to the size of the cocoon. And though I do feel that this possibility is near zero, I'm not going to say it's not impossible. And again, this is just more conjecture, but there's quite literally infinite possibilities until we either get another gameplay trailer or a story trailer that breaks down the Land of Shadow and Mesmer's character. Now, we've covered Mesmer's flame, dabbled in the family tree, and speculated where he may sit in it, but uh, who exactly is he? What is his role here in the Land of Shadow? And I'm just going to like say this ahead of time, I, I'm not exactly too sure but we're going to kind of lean into the same speculation that everybody else has and uh yeah it has been more or less confirmed that similar to several other characters within the known elden ring universe mesmer is a sort of hero or fallen hero hero of what and to whom is only speculation but all three creators that i've watched had similar ideas though i believe it's easier said that mesmer is either being put to use here in the land of shadow or he is simply loyal to Marika and what she represents, and there is something of importance to Marika here, which I will note later on. Mesmer has built a reputation of killing those without grace if the narration is to be trusted in displaying part of his character. Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death in the embrace of Mesmer's flame. Those stripped of grace of gold shall all meet death in the embrace of Mesmer's flame. This phrase actually gives us a good hint at what Mesmer is doing here in the Land of Shadow, if not what his very role and purpose is. As many have noted, this makes it sound like Mesmer is some kind of watchdog protecting the Land of Shadow from those who may upset the balance of chaotic order. And I do mean chaotic order, as we do see a lot of uh, similarities and symbols of and creatures that would belong in the Age of the Crucible, a time before the Erd Tree. And as we know, everything that did not conform or was given purpose by America's order was banished, enslaved, or executed, and to see all sorts of beasts and people sharing shunned features leads me to believe that Mesmer being some kind of guardian could potentially make sense. There's not too much else I can say on his role in the Land of Shadow as I'm not too sure what to think, and with the somewhat limited introduction we got of him, hopefully we'll see another trailer here soon, or a story trailer, coming out within the following months, before the launch. I suppose one of the final pieces of Mesmer in his relation to Elden Ring's story we currently know that I want to discuss is how we get into this, and yes, this is going to step a bit off course from Mesmer himself, and focus a little bit more on Mikola here, but this is something that I wanted to cover regardless. Now, yes, of course, defeating Moog is a fairly obvious step, as that is where Mikola's corpse rests, and at the end of the trailer, a, few, a new narrator voice tells us to touch the withered arm and be transported to the Land of Shadow. Now, I'm not too sure who this new mysterious voice is, but it's not Melina, as her voice is far lighter, and it's slightly less of an accent when speaking. However, I think it's fair to assume that the person speaking is presumably the female character we see standing away from, away from Mikola, or something that I just thought of was that it could actually be Mikola himself, as it does have a bit of a youthful tone to it, and Mikola himself, cursed with, again, eternal youth, would make sense that he has kind of a, 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 a vibrantly childish voice. One thing I want to note here is that in the Famitsu art interview, Miyazaki is asked about the original key art for Shadow of the Earth Tree, and he even expanded further by adding that we will be learning about both the past of the Land of Shadows as well as Queen Marika, again a reference to what I mentioned before, 
This fact right here could potentially throw a wrench in everyone's ideas, as that seemed to be the focus of this statement aside from mentioning we'd be following Mikola. But anyways, there is one final final thing, I know, I'm trying to wrap this up here. One final final thing I want to mention before we finish this out, and I've probably, like I said, I've dragged this on too long already. The other requirement for starting the DLC is to defeat Radon, which I find very interesting. For one, Radon is only necessary to defeat when doing Ronnie's or a few other side characters' questlines, such as Alexander. The reasoning for Ronnie's questline is that Radon, with his overwhelming mastery of gravity magic, has stopped the movement of the stars, which happen to carry his sister's fate. But what does this have to do with Mikola? Well, if we travel to the far north of Mountaintop of Giants, we'll come across a small castle. Castle Stole. It is here we learn of Mikola's attempt in trying to revive Godwin's flesh, the core of all Deathroot after Ronnie planned his assassination, for her to escape her Empyrean flesh bound to her two fingers' whims. Mikola is attempting to revive Godwin so he may offer him a true death with hopes to rid the lands between of Deathroot and the blight that it brings with it. The ritual required for this calls upon an eclipse. Now, I'm no Elden Ring magic guru, so I don't really know the details about the whole thing. I probably should have looked it up, but again, this is dragging on. Essentially, the eclipse never came, and they could never harness the energy for the ritual. This is because, by the time they had started, Radon had already ceased the star's movement. And this is where some speculation begins. As you may know, Caelid was poisoned by Millennia's Scarlet Rot after she marched southward from the Halig Tree, Millennia was marching south to fight Radon, most likely on Mikola's request, and have him relinquish his hold on the stars so that Mikola's ritual could be completed. This is likely going to be featured and mentioned within Mikola's storyline here in the DLC, and we may yet see Godwin or what little remains of him. But that leaves one final question in place, and maybe you've thought of this, maybe you haven't, but what does Ronnie have to do with Mikola? It's an odd question, I know, but we see in the original key art that Mikola is writing Torrent. This is actually mentioned in the key art question toward to Miyazaki in the Famitsu interview, and he doesn't really address it, but it is mentioned that he is writing Torrent. When we arrive at the Church of Ella after Melina grants us Torrent's companionship, we run into Rani, who is going by Runa at this time. She offers us the spirit calling bell. She says that Torrent's former master entrusted it to her, and if we tell her that we cannot summon Torrent, she leaves the bell anyways, saying that she is leaving it at the behest of Torrent's former master. Now, the vocabulary here seems like, you know, it may not be an important piece of dialogue, but the term behest means that she wasn't just handing it over to honor wishes or believe that it was the right thing to do, but behest means that she was asked directly. She was asked. Not, not just a whim, not just, oh, he, uh, he wanted me to do this at some point. She was asked to give this to the person who now owns Torrent, or potentially even commanded that she needed to deliver the bell to Torrent's new master. What is the relationship between Ronnie and Mikola? I'm not too sure, but it might be a shot in the dark here. Perhaps Ronnie aided Mikola in his research to finding a cure for millennia and determining the specifics for the Eclipse Ritual they would hold at Castle Soul. Perhaps Mikola was the first to approach her after finding out she was the first to find a way out of the control of the Two Fingers and the Greater Will, implying that she could possess knowledge on escaping the affliction or notice of other Outer Gods. Or perhaps they connected as Empyreans, both having shared the same fate planned out for them. They find similarity in one another, as each seemed to want nothing to do with becoming a God for the Greater Will, or attaching themselves to the Golden Order. Well, I know this is a lot to comprehend here, There's, and really it's just me rambling, and I know this has nothing to do with Mesmer as the original intent of this video was meant to have. It is something that I wanted to cover as it came to mind while I was making changes to my script and video here. But with all of that said, I want to know what you think in the comments. Was there anything in my video you, you're fi you find yourself agreeing with? Was there something that I've overlooked? Was there, you know, anything that I've, you know, missed in the, in the translations here and, and anything I might be missing in terms of context? Uh, I'd be seeing, I'd be interested in seeing what everyone else thinks. And with that said, 
I'll see you guys next time.